Hello, Tim. Hello, Daddy. Morning, Kip. Hello, Daddy. I am by riot scandal. Prime Minister agrees to inquiry. This is your chance, Arthur. Now that they've sacked you, no one can stop you telling the truth. It's what you wanted. Yes, it's what I wanted. Aren't you going to have any breakfast? No, well, I think I shall go and have a shot at a pigeon or two. Can I come too? No, not this time, Kip. I've got to go and do some thinking. Good morning, Sir Arthur. Did you get my note? Yes. And? I burnt it. You can tell your friends that I refuse to be bought or intimidated. You're making a mistake. Not anymore. Because of them, I'm without honor and without office, but not without integrity. You can let them know I shall be giving evidence at the inquiry and shall tell them everything. <laughs> Your father wants to be alone. Every government has its secret service branch. America, it's CIA. France, Desiem Bureau. England, MI5. My messy job. Well, that's when they usually call on me or someone like me. Oh, yes. My name is Drake. John Drake. Forty-seven miles north of the French coast of Brittany lies the British island of Franju. Small, lonely, remote. And it watches each new arrival with inbred curiosity. This time, the call was as brief as it was explicit. Subject, Judith Lindsay, wife of the British diplomat, Sir Arthur Lindsay, deceased. It is anticipated that an attempt will be made on her life while she is on the island of Franju. Move with extreme caution. Advise. Good morning. Good morning. Can I help you? Yes, I'd like a room, please. Well, we've got six all empty. You can take your pick. It's the off-season, is it? It's always off-season here. Never changes, month in and month out. Probably has its compensations, though. <laughs> if you like the quiet life. I'll put you in number three. Oh, fine. Thanks. Will you be staying long, Mr... Drake, a night, perhaps, too. Are you here on business, sir? Uh, I've come to look at the castle. <laughs> and I wouldn't cross the island to look at it. Well, it's pure Norman, you know, unchanged since the 13th century. Yeah, well, you're welcome to it. Your hobby? In a way. I suppose you'd be what they call an antiquary. I've been called all sorts of things. You don't get many visitors here, then? No, you're the first in six weeks. Oh, except, of course, there was the lady with the two little boys came in last Friday. She's staying over at the castle. Oh, really? They haven't turned it into a hotel, then, have they? <laughs> it's mostly in ruins, except for the furnished apartment in the grounds. No one's lived there for the last two years. It's a lonely place. Morning, George. Gentlemen, Morning. come all the way from the mainland to see the castle. Good morning. Good morning. Telegram came Monday, which he phoned London. Well, this is the only phone on the island, so George goes over to the castle and fetches her in his sidecar. Or she gets through to London. No, this is far enough, she says. I'm not running away any further and bangs down the receiver. Really? <laughs> George had to drive her all the way back to the castle again. <laughs> Still, she's not a bad looker, eh, George? <laughs> uh, any mail? Oh, yes, there's the uh, police journal and one letter. Oh, that's one letter better than last week. Right. Oh, by the way, I'll need some kind of transport to take me across to the castle. Can you fix me up with anything? Well, if you can handle a pony, I can fix oh, you up. Oh, that'll be fine. Thanks. I'm glad. Come to take a look around the castle. Oh, I'm afraid you're out of luck. Oh, how's that? Well, no one's allowed inside. Sorry, those are the orders. Oh, whose orders? The owners. Oh, but I understood the man who owns this place now lives in the south of France. So? 
So uh, it wouldn't do him any harm if I had a look around. Look, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but I've got my job to think about. <laughs> Who's going to see me? Well, there's a family living in the apartment. Oh, they're only tenants. I wouldn't bother them, would I? No, I know you wouldn't. Because you're not coming in. Anyway, you're trespassing. Oh. <laughs> well, far be it from me to uh, trespass. Good morning, my oh. friend. We wouldn't trespass, would we? What do you want? I, I'm sorry to disturb you. Why didn't you knock? I did, Lady Lindsay, but I'm afraid you, you couldn't have heard me. I'm not Lady Lindsay. Oh, then what is your name, please? Blair. Judith Blair. Judith Anne Blair. As I recall, that's the name you wrote under before you married Sir Arthur Lindsay. Uh, please take your hand away from the gun. It might go off. Who are you? I think that uh, this might help to clarify my intrusion. Why have you come all this way to see me, Mr. Drake? My people asked you to return to the mainland. You wouldn't, so... Uh... And what makes the government so concerned about me all of a sudden? I can't imagine they're feeling any remorse over my husband's death. It was most convenient for them, wasn't it? What was? My husband shooting himself. Well, now, you, you, you don't really believe that he shot himself, do you? No, I don't. But the government seems quite happy to accept that theory. Uh, I, I, I don't think so, uh, Lady Lindsay. Otherwise, they wouldn't have sent me here. Why are you here, Mr. Drake? Well, uh, may I? We think that your husband was killed by certain persons who didn't want him to appear at the inquiry. Persons to whom his evidence would have been damaging. And? And we also think that you're in danger, too, from the same people. We want to protect you. Why should I be in danger? Now, I don't suppose they deliver the Sunday papers here, do they? So you won't have read this. Attractive Lady Lindsay, whose husband recently died in such tragic circumstances, has retired to the rock-bound island of Franju. She is writing a book exposing the scandal which led to the riots in Nyamba, etc., etc. How earth did they get hold of that? How on earth did they get hold of anything? What difference does it make? It's out now, isn't it? And what do you want me to do, Mr. Drake? Go running off somewhere else? I have my book to write, and I intend to stay here and get on with it. Arthur was accused of cynically inciting the riots to further his own policy of being responsible for hundreds of deaths. I'm not going to have the world believing that. And I'm not getting on with my book when I'm sitting here talking to you. In any case, I think you're exaggerating the danger. Believe me, I know soon enough if some stranger arrived on the island. I walked straight in here, didn't I? Mummy! Mummy! Who's he? Kip! <laughs> this is Mr. Drake. This is Tim and this is Kip. Oh. Tim, how did this happen? Got broken. Well, I can see that, but how? <coughs> You've been flying the kite on the cliffs. You promised me you wouldn't go there. Now, listen to me. You know it's very dangerous. You didn't. Well, then how did this happen? A big helicopter. Oh, Tim, don't tell such fibs. He's not. You mean the helicopter really did this? Yes. 
Oh, is it a big one? Yeah. Let me see. Oh, I reckon we can fix this all right. Did you see the helicopter land, Kip? Yeah. Well, uh, wish I'd seen it. Was it very close? Yeah. Whereabouts? Over there? Will you show me? Forgive me for intruding. My name's Saunders. Please come in. Thank you. Um, I'm an architect. I'm afraid you'll be seeing quite a bit of me. Oh, really? Yes, I've been asked to carry out some restoration work on the castle. The roof of the Great Hall is a little shaky. You young fellows want to keep away from there. It's very dangerous. You broke my kite. Oh, yes, I, I know. I'm sorry, I apologize. I must have a serious talk with my pilot about that. When will you be starting on the repairs, Mr. Saunders? Well, tomorrow, actually. The agents told me you'd moved in, so I hope we won't worry you too much. You uh, don't find it too lonely here, Mrs...? Blair. Oh, no. <laughs> These two keep you pretty busy, huh? <laughs> yes. Well, I mustn't waste any more of your time. I uh, hope to see more of you, Mrs. Blair. Yes, indeed. Goodbye, Mr. Saunders. Off you go and wash now. Good night, dear. Good night. Well, there you are. That's your first stranger. No, not really. I knew he was coming. Oh, how? Caretaker told me. Oh, the unfriendly gentleman with the shotgun. Oh, he's all right. Oh, so he didn't buy your way when you arrived. Quite friendly. He told me some men were coming to do some repairs and offered to stay here and keep an eye on them. Or on you, perhaps. No, I'm not running away from here, if that's what you mean. Then in that case, I'm staying with you. You see, I knew your husband. I, uh, I met him in Accra about three years ago, and again this year in the Protectorate during the early riots. I admired his work. I believed in his policy. There were others who didn't. Now, these others engineered the riots and tried to make him the scapegoat. You're going to expose them, but I believe they'll show their hand long before your book is finished. That's why I'm staying, if you don't mind. Come on, you two. Let's have that kite. I'll fix it for you. Make a kite that will fly higher than any kite ever flew before. I waited until Saunders left, and then I was on my way back to the only telephone on the island. I wanted to discover if Mr. Saunders was really a consultant architect in charge of repairs at the castle, and whether his sullen friend really was the caretaker. Wasting your time, Mr. Drake. Oh, how's that? The phone's out of order. Since when? I tried to get the mainland only half an hour ago. Really? Mm. Does, uh, does that happen often? Of course, not the first time. Mm -hmm. What did you think of our castle, Mr. Drake? Didn't think much of your caretaker. Caretaker? Yeah, the man that looks after the place. Well, is there one? You didn't know? No. How could anybody get onto the island without you knowing about it? Well, a boat can get in on the other side. There's a landing place there. I hope you don't mind me eavesdropping. I was up at the castle this morning. That fellow's a madman, strutting around with a loaded gun. Oh, by the way, my name's Saunders. Mine's John Drake. How do you do? Nice couple of kids that woman's got. Friend of yours? Which woman? At the castle. Oh, so you got in. Oh, that man wouldn't let me pass the gate. <laughs> He's a fool. I'll report him to the agent. Yeah. You staying here long, Mr. Drake? Oh, no, no, I have to get back to the mainland. I have a call to make to London, and the phone here is out of order. Pity, I'd have been glad to have shown you over. If you're going today, Mr. Drake, you'll have to hurry. The ferry's just leaving. Uh, there isn't another one. All right, I'm on my way. Uh, send my things across by the next ferry, would you? I'll pick them up the other side here. I think that that should cover it. Thank you oh, very I... much indeed. Goodbye, Mr. Saunders. I'm sorry that I can't stay. I'll let them know you're coming.
everyone thought I'd left the island, I persuaded the skipper of the ferry boat to take me round to the other side and put me ashore again. I placed myself in the position of Lady Lindsay's enemies. They'd killed the husband to avoid exposure. They'd made it look like suicide. And now they must kill the wife too. But how? It must not appear to be murder, for that would reopen the question of her husband's death, and people would be saying that he was killed to stop him testifying. Her death would have to be maneuvered in some way to make it appear that she too had taken her own life, or had died from misadventure. Anyway, that was their problem. I didn't intend to give them time to solve it. Hello? I'm taking you out of here right away. Oh, no, really? I'm sorry, that's an order. I have a boat waiting around this side of the island. If we don't get a move on, it'll be high and dry. Where are the boys? And they're having it. All right, come on, you two. They've gone. Out the window. Well, they haven't even stopped. You take a look around the front. I'll try the back. Kim? Tim! They're up on the cliffs. The cliffs? Yes, with a kite.
Lady Lindsay found dead at the bottom of the cliff. She fell while looking for her two sons. The boys! We must find them. Oh, they're back at the castle. Stay here. I'll go back and look for the boys. you've gone over to the mainland. No, oh, no, I, I got the, the ferry to drop me on this side of the island. It seemed a pity to come so far and miss the castle. Do you live here? No. You're certainly making yourself very much at home, aren't you, Mr. Saunders? I really don't think there's any of your I'm business. I'm walking into somebody else's house and uh, reading their manuscript. Lady Lindsay has asked me for my opinion. Oh, and you met today. Oh, that's certainly one friendship that's blossomed very quickly. Look, I don't know what you're getting at. I'm sorry. I, I suppose that Lady Lindsay asked you for your opinion because you uh, come from West Africa? No. The uh, Nyamba Protectorate. Wrong it's again. It's a fascinating document, you know. It's about the recent riots there. A murderous conspiracy. The death of a diplomat. His assassination. It's an exposure of the man who engineered the whole filthy business. What absolute rubbish. So you do know about West Africa? Oh, yes. It's a, it's a fascinating document. If you have a strong stomach, Mr. Saunders. Just who are you, oh, Mr. No Drake? one in particular. I just try to mind my own business until I come up against people like you. Like you, Mr. Saunders. Everything's okay. Come in, we have a guest. Fred, I don't think you've met Mr. Drake. This is Mr. Burke, my pilot. Oh? Oh, how do you do, Mr. Uh, Burke? Those are very pretty maneuvers you were making up there in the edge of the cliff maneuvers, just now. Maneuvers, yes. Burke was making a survey over there. And as Mr. Burke says, everything went off okay. He managed to push Lady Lindsay right over the edge. I wouldn't use that if I were you. You see, it happened that I was just below, retrieving the boy's kite, and she fell right into my arms. At this moment, she's on her way to the mainland, and if you happen to shoot me, I'm afraid she'd know who did it. It's all right. I found the boy. Fetch Mr. Drake. There's no one in that name here. Oh, indeed, there is. He left us only a quarter of an hour ago. Ah, no, there's no one inside. Well, I'll take a look around if you don't mind. I do mind. Nobody goes inside. Those are my orders. Oh, you anyway. I never saw you around here before. Well, it's none of your business, is it? Why don't you go on your way? You're trespassing. <laughs> well, quick march. That's it. This way, gentlemen. Come on, quick! Please stand there. I saw it. in history. The last person to be incarcerated in this dungeon was Stephen Bluff, 1346. Uh, he was burnt at the stake. Inside, please. You'd better come right away, Mr. Drake, if you want to get across to the mainland tonight. The boat's nearly high and dry. All right, you can run along if you like, Skipper, as long as you leave your mate here to take care of the prisoners. Uh, we won't be coming with you, I'm afraid. Mr. Saunders has been kind enough to loan us his helicopter. Thank you very much indeed. Good night. <laughs>